Um, my name is Jake Athari. I am the head of product management for material design at Google. Uh, I'm excited to be here and give a chat on uh, design systems and uh, material design. Uh, the idea is to share with uh, all of you how Google does uh, uh, design, the things that we think about in our design system, uh, give a little bit of background on design systems itself and, and share how you can use the same exact tools and components uh, and uh, uh, patterns that we use to build our applications. Uh, you can use them as well. We share them publicly, uh, and, and I'll, I'll chat a little bit more about that. Um, a little background on myself. Uh, I've been at Google for six years. Uh, previously, I was the uh, general manager of the Glass program. Uh, prior to that, I worked for Amazon. I uh, led a product management team for Amazon Web Services on the storage side. And prior to that, I was at Microsoft, uh, where I led some design system teams, uh, as well as uh, was on the founding team of Office 365. Uh, so with, with that, uh, please feel free to engage and ask any questions that, that come up. Uh, I'm excited to be here and share, and uh, thanks to Jason and the, the rest of the Oopstart team uh, for, for inviting me. So let's get right to it. So first off, uh, material design uh, is a design system. Um, there's no real like clear accepted way to define a, a design system, but uh, there are generally a, a series of things that people agree about it. I, I like to talk about it as a principled library of design guidelines, uh, code, uh, components that uh, are used to make products. Uh, they act together in a way to have a single design uh, source of truth, a single point of reference for the whole design and development team so that the process of designing, realizing, and developing products uh, is streamlined. Um, it's built up of a few things, uh, starting with tools and designer, tools for designers and developers, uh, having the patterns, components, the guidelines, the design philosophies, all embedded and stored within that design system so that everybody could have a cohesive perspective and a consistent uh, perspectives um, uh, as well, but it's the to me it's the really magical things about uh, design systems such as capturing brand value, uh, the way that people talk about the way that they're working, the mindset, the shared belief system, um, and the way that it encompasses uh, the larger design goals that we as product developers, product designers have for our users. And one of the things that at Google, um, when we talk about designing at scale, we put a ton of effort into research. We research the things that we're researching um, uh, and the ways that we're researching them. We go, we go above and beyond to really understand uh, the value of what we deliver. And on, on the design system front, we've done an incredible amount of research and we continue to do uh, research day in and day out to improve the way that we operate within the company and the way that we provide tools externally to, to help people. Um, we really need to have the right data to prove that what we're delivering is of value to users. And in the context of design systems, we've actually found four key verticals uh, that people really get value out of. Um, the first two, which are process and product, uh, are probably not that surprising to, to you or to us. Um, you know, having a design system is a lot of a lot about uh, the product experience, um, making sure that you have a, a fast, efficient, and clear way of delivering on the vision that you and your team have set forth. Uh, increases engineering efficiencies, increases designer efficiencies. Make sure that your intention is actually implemented the way it was. Um, uh, on the product side, uh, you consider things like usability, utility, and trust. Um, those were those were you know kind of the strict goals that most people have in, in in design systems. When we when we do our research, we find that there are a lot of other uh, values and uh, that people get out of it, specifically in team health and job satisfaction. Um, and you know, the more that we engage with companies that use Material or or use other design systems. Uh, it's almost universally true that team health and job satisfaction, so that the relationships that you have with designers and between designers and developers and your marketing team and your product team uh, are, are strengthened. There's no questions of whether they're working towards a shared goal and the collaboration is, is really meaningful. 
Um, on an individual level, you start to see that designers, developers, and those engaged with the design system end up having a, as a result of being more efficient in their job, uh, actually have an increased job satisfaction. Uh, they find that they're able to engage with other people on their team better and learn and grow skills versus spending time managing and engaging with others to make sure they're on the same page. So there's a lot of intrinsic value um, in just employing a design system right out the gate. So I, I wanted to just sort of frame this uh, a little bit before I started talking about some of the, the values that um, we espouse in our design system. But as a whole, I'm going to put it in the context of our, our system that you can pick up and use, which is called material design. Um, and we also use the same, same uh, technology internally and have a design system uh, that is representing our uh, brand ethos as, as Google. Um, and you can certainly customize it for, for your brand. So this is going to be in the talk of, of, of in the lens of material design, but uh, largely these are the kinds of things that uh, apply to most design systems, but I'm going to call out the specific things that we do uh, in order to, to satisfy our incredibly large uh, user base. So the first, the first reason I want to talk about um, uh, 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 around you know the design system that we have uh, called Material, um, and why you may want to employ it, employ it is is around scale. Just right out the gate, we're talking about designing for scale, uh, designing for billions of users. So the first reason we want to talk about is largely the reason you're here. Um, Material is Google's design system, and we made it to support hundreds of products for both web and mobile. Um, we serve billions of users around the world. Um, and, and how you can take advantage of that. So first, uh, I want to just get out of the way that what does it mean to be des uh, designed for Google scale? Um, to me personally, uh, the largest value you get out of using a design system that's built for, for uh, a user base that's as large as we are um, is that it's really well researched. Uh, on all aspects that, that matter that you may not have the ability to do on your own if you're a small company. So that starts with things like accessibility to uh, visual design um, processes to uh, assessing the usability. And now we're looking into all, uh, uh, all kinds of uh, inclusive metrics. Uh, that's a really important thing for us to do. And we've been doing that for a while with our research teams. Um, we have design ethicists who actually look and make sure that we are incorporating uh, inclusive design, and we have practices throughout the company that actually help uh, to do that. We invest in foundational research to ensure that we're delivering the best experience for everyone possible um, so that we not only have beautiful design, but uh, we achieve inclusion for uh, about everyone and think more than aesthetics. Uh, the other major aspect that, that to me, defines Google scale um, and what, we, what we've done in terms of uh, providing a quality product is that we've, so, so to speak, battle tested across hundreds of our apps, different versions, different platforms, uh, both on desktop and mobile. And we have a very rigorous way of testing our components, testing our patterns, testing for usability, testing for aesthetics. So we test at that scale in our actual products. We don't uh, ship components that we aren't using ourselves in our search space, our geography tools, our uh, end user apps, in um, Google apps and services. And so that, that goal is to ensure that we have a variety of use cases and types of people considered. Uh, a lot of what we talk about is solve before scale. So we make sure that we test it, get a lot of different types of use cases uh, employed, we have uh, a very varied set of uh, users, not just the canonical set of users, but we get a lot beyond that. Um, and we make sure that those, those individuals and those use cases are considered and validated in a product uh, environment that is a production environment, not just testing in, in a closed environment, but every component, every pattern that we do that we release uh, publicly is, is tested in a, in a product in a very, very, very meaningful way. The other aspect that I want to uh, consider here uh, that, that uh, Google design, and I, and I touched on it in the previous slide, uh, that material design at, at Google scale uh, takes advantage of uh, for you is we are 
designed specifically to consider things like accessibility uh, and measuring it against WCAG standards um, very, very, very aggressively. Um, it considers things like internationalization as a core tenant. Again, like to satisfy Google's mission of making the world's information universally available, we have to invest in deep foundational research to ensure that we're meeting the needs of all of our users everywhere in the world, um, and we need to make sure that it's inclusive for all. Uh, the other aspect here to consider is that the branding backbone that keeps our products looking and feeling related. So if you pick up the Google search app and you pick up the Gmail app, you know it came from the same place. There is a cohesion that happens between these products, um, uh, particularly in uh, the usability, the experiences, and the branding. But um, not only do we consider those aspects of branding, but we also consider the destination of the products you're going to build. Uh, they're going to fit into that ecosystem. So if you pick up uh, material for the material bits for Android and you start building against those, those are going to feel like they're Android apps. They're going to have that uh, Android design aesthetic and the commonality of components with, uh, with competitive products, with other products in the ecosystem, with our products. It's going to feel like it fits. And at the same time, it's going to allow you to um, have a expressive uh, brand uh, ethos uh, within, within, your, within your solution. Um, the other aspect of this is that we take Google's latest and greatest technologies uh, and the new types of experiences and we scale along with them. As an example uh, of that, this is our work with MLKit that you're seeing on the slide, uh, which brings the capabilities of machine learning uh, you can plug them directly into your app, and there's appropriate guidance on how to do that, how to do it well, to make sure uh, that uh, users can understand how to use it. It fits in the, with the rest of the uh, ecosystem ethos of how to use it. Uh, and as Google innovates with things like ML, uh, we, we embed those learnings into our design uh, philosophies and then in turn into our design system. Um, and you get those types of learnings as well because we provide those as guidelines as well as integrated components with production-ready code. And then another example uh, to, to just make sure that we have uh, full coverage here. Um, another example of scaling with Google was the introduction of our dark theme. Um, so this happened uh, with, with alignment with Android Q. Um, it was one of the top requested both within the company and externally within the Google developer community. And so as we built it for ourselves, we also worked closely with the Android team to make sure that the recommendations that we had about employing a dark theme uh, uh, were embedded directly into Android itself. So when you use material design, you're using a design uh, system that's not going to go stale. It's constantly being evolved, uh, both from the design aesthetics uh, as well as technology and functionality and foundational uh, uh, capabilities that you'll want in your applications. So you'll, you'll effectively get all the benefits of us improving the design system without any additional investment that you need to make. It just naturally uh, uh, moves forward. The next major uh, uh, area why you want to use a design system uh, is, is the idea that you can have a singular system for both design uh, and development, and that enables uh, uh, designers and developers to, to um, work together more collaboratively and more efficiently. Um, you know, a big, a, that is a big part of, of what uh, makes a design system valuable, um, is that it allows designers and developers to speak the same language using the same components. It makes their collaboration smoother. Uh, and makes their uh, uh, collaboration shorter and more efficient. So um, if you have a team of separate designers and developers, that is really, really fantastic. If you're a small company and you're both a designer and a developer, uh, it makes it actually much easier for you to, to put those hats on uh, oh, back to back. You can move between those design and development worlds more easily, which saves you time and helps you focus on making your app uh, experience clear, making it special, making it useful for your users, not spending the time in the details that are hard to translate between the developer mode and the designer mode. So we've, we've simplified a lot of that, that effort.
Sorry, these slides are taking a little bit of uh, uh, time to, to load. Um, Um, as an example here, to take it further, when you use material, you can know that, for instance, the uh, simple floating action button component as a designer uses uh, in the design tool corresponds with the exact floating button component an engineer will use while building the app. So you can see here very clearly that the code and the design are one-to-one -one, um, so that there needs to be minimal translation from a developer uh, taking a designer's output of a design uh, uh, intent uh, and putting it together. So you get that, that clarity that as a designer, when you have an intention, that intention corresponds to the same set of components that you are uh, designing around that the developer will build for. In addition to helping bridge the gaps between designers and developers, Material is going to also help you achieve consistency and cohesiveness. I've, I've mentioned that already, uh, to deliver the same product across multiple platforms. So earlier I mentioned cohesiveness and consistency in the context of uh, building something that fits into an ecosystem. So if you're building and you're using the material libraries and you're building something for Android, uh, the app that you build will fit in terms of the aesthetic, uh, in terms of the user experience that Android users expect of their ecosystem. Um, here, what we talk about is, if you are building, you're likely building for more than one platform, whether it be the web or the mobile or Android or iOS, our ability to have cross-platform support ensures that you can not only meet that uh, cohesiveness that you want in the ecosystem which you're targeting, uh, but it also ensures that the app ecosystem that you make for yourself, whether you're using it on a phone or you're using it on a desktop or a, a, a browser, that experience that your user gets in your app is also consistent. Um, so here, here's an example. Uh, I'll, I'll go through a couple examples of, of companies and, and, and products that have uh, uh, put, put things together that, that make um, uh, use of this cross-platform uh, uh, behavior. So in this example, you see uh, Basil, which is a recipe app that comes across uh, phone, uh, uh, tablets, uh, desktop in both landscape and portrait mode. So here you can see how material components uh, are designed to work across a range of sizes uh, of screen from small phones to tablets to desktops. Um, on the next slide, uh, we have another example. Um, um, here, here's another uh, example, it's called OWL. Uh, it's an educational app. Uh, that uh, presents uh, uh, content uh, based on interest uh, topic interest areas. Um, they they too have used Material to build a series of applications, both on on Android and iOS, that fill that same singular design uh, ethos. Um, they also do have online solutions as well for their products. Um, but here with Owl, the 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 beautiful thing is that their cross platform uh, experiences go beyond um, simply desktop. Uh, and mobile, they go across uh, actual uh, phone ecosystems as well, and they've done a remarkable job of making sure uh, that anybody who picks up the, the device uh, uh, to use their app, um, regardless of which device, whether it's an Android or iOS device, for example, if you're using an Android phone and an iOS tablet, you recognize the OWL app, not just based on its brand aesthetic, and this is where I want to make a, a really strong point, that it goes beyond brand aesthetic, even though that does it remarkably well, uh, it goes to the experience that uh, um, uh, people keep seeing as well. Um, and here is a, a, a third example of a company called Shrine, which is an e-commerce app. Uh, Thomas, uh, I, I noticed that you said you can't see the slides. I'm gonna just stop. Um, and uh, uh, and and uh, restart sharing really quickly. One second. All 
All right, back. Thanks, Anna. Um, uh, Karen, I'll get to that at the end. Um, uh, uh, well, 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 I'll share a little bit more there. Um, so here, here's an example of an e-commerce uh, clothing and uh, accessory site called Shrine. Um, uh, we present all of these and several others on, on, our, on our Material I.O. website, so you can see several of them. But the idea is that these case studies were designed uh, by our team to demonstrate the versatility of the system across different applications, uh, different uh, 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 use cases, different platforms, and you can see each one is really well adapted to different modes of interaction and screen sizes. Um, in addition to these case studies uh, for how you might apply those uh, patterns across uh, different platforms, we actually provide the physical components, the, the production-ready code uh, for web, Android, iOS, and Flutter to help you achieve these sorts of designs in your project. Uh, and, and Karen, to your point, uh, to your question, um, these are the kinds of libraries, so like Flutter, for example, has, has a lot of great cross-platform support. Um, uh, you can find all of these uh, components uh, on, on GitHub. They're uh, open source and available for everybody to use. We're also uh, integrated into package managers on each platform that you would uh, consider. So for example, NPM on the web, uh, Maven on Android, CocoaPods on iOS. So you, you can find these components uh, where, where you uh, would generally work as a designer or developer. Um, you can also use the tools that you use today, whether it be Sketch or Figma, uh, to do your work, uh, and then translate over. And Android Studio obviously has uh, as well uh, to make this process a, a little bit more smooth for you. So we've talked a lot about um, a, a brand, uh, brand aesthetic, so I, I'm going to just I left this a little bit to the end to talk about it because that is a, you know, initially design systems when they evolved, a large part of it was to make sure um, that we uh, enabled people to to really keep their brand aesthetic alive, right? It started with, with two things, brand aesthetic and uh, maintaining cohesiveness of experience. And as we've evolved, design systems have evolved. But one of the foundational tenets of having a design system is uh, being able to express your brand ethos. And so one of the things that we've done with Material uh, is use the same mechanisms that we do uh, to express our brand. We allow you to do that as well in our, uh, in our open platform. Um, and so this works in two ways. Uh, one, you can, you can uh, uh, express your you know, iconography, typography, uh, colors, etc. cetera. Uh, and you can actually change your experience to say that I have unique technologies and unique experiences that I want to style and theme to fit material, but I want to make the experiences different. So you can do all, all kinds of uh, customization that way. But here we're going to talk uh, predominantly about the strict brand experience uh, aspects of this. So last year, um, uh, we, we launched a major update to material uh, that made it really, really easy to add custom colors, shapes, typography, um, and it goes beyond the standards of like of simple like color and font uh, and iconography, you now actually get to, to change physical shapes and patterns of the way uh, things move on the screen and the motion can be uh, uh, manipulated, shapes can be manipulated, so you get far more control of, of your brand aesthetic here. And you can find new ways to uh, uh, introduce uh, your brand aesthetic. Uh, we also offer a bunch of uh, customizations for, for moving away from using just the material design palette. So we offer a palette uh, that is a default palette, but the, the customizations let you move away from that uh, to generating your own palettes um, uh, that, that satisfy your brand and learning on that generated palette to make uh, creating any themes that you may want, whether they be, a, as an example, creating the dark theme that you may want. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. If you want to create other types of themes uh, for other purposes, it makes it a lot easier to do that as well. Um, and then instead of simply just relying on uh, only on rules for Roboto as a font, we offer customization for creating typefaces. So you can actually have a branded typeface. 
Um, you can play around with the theme editor in the in in this dome and uh, uh, get a better sense of the knobs and controls that we offer. Uh, and then print out a sticker sheet for your work so you can analyze it on on paper. Um, but you you effectively create your own uh, own typefaces, your own branded typefaces, uh, and then you can review them after the fact. But uh, 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 it becomes very clear uh, that you get a lot of additional customization. Your your brand uh, aesthetic becomes far more refined. And as I mentioned earlier, we are evolving as Google uh, in ways that we express our brand. Um, uh, and uh, uh, as we find new ways to, to express it, we want to open those up uh, uh, more, more broadly. Um, looking at Daniel's question really quick, is it allowed to put your... Uh, Daniel, yes, certainly. Uh, so Daniel's question is um, uh, taking their UI abstraction layer uh, on top of a material design framework. Um, and using material as sort of a mechanism to, to skin or options to customize uh, and, and skin skin was in quotes uh, uh, to, to make that that feel of material uh, certainly you can do that actually there's there's um, I'll, I'll digress from this a little bit but part of material is providing guidelines um, and there are many people who use material for its guidelines strictly and so Daniel the easiest uh, I shouldn't say the easiest. The most basic and simple way you could achieve this is uh, to take our guidelines and implement uh, 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 abstraction here uh, that represents something that is baked into our guidelines and actually do that. You can also use components and uh, um, frameworks uh, that we provide um, and, and leverage it and sell it within your product, absolutely. So the last uh, area, and I've, I've alluded to this uh, already, uh, lastly, number five is that material design, uh, it scales with you, whether you're a, a small company or a large company. Um, and I'll give a, a few examples here. Um, here's an app called Simple Habit Meditation. It's a small business that runs out of San Francisco. Um, it's their goal to empower humans to lead less stressful lives, uh, achieve more, live better, the kinds of philosophies you want in healthy, mindful thinking and the meditation and stress-related re apps that you would find. Um, uh, they actually, uh, every year we, we have uh, what we call the Material Design Award and in 2018 they won the Material Design Award for being able to use multiple elements of our design guidance. Uh, and they did that really, really well. So they've used our guidance for onboarding experience to craft uh, uh, introductions to their app and then use different cards and navigation mechanisms to support um, their internal navigations and their user experience and their content. And then they went to, more, most recently, they've continued to evolve uh, as we've evolved and, and released things around motion design. Um, so they've leveraged motion, motion design and motion interactions uh, uh, to take advantage of that. And, you know, the, the beauty of what Simple Habit did was that they evolved this. This wasn't, uh, oh, materials here, let me pick it up and let me implement everything or, or, or nothing. They started with uh, little bits here and there, and then they grew over time. So they started with a few elements, they added multiple elements, they took advantage of di uh, different aspects of our design guidance, and then they added motion and, and interaction design patterns uh, that were really, really meaningful uh, for, for articulating the kinds of behaviors that they wanted their users to. Um, another example uh, is Lyft. So uh, a lot of you probably use Lyft and, uh, and its competitive products. Uh, but when Lyft recently revamped its site, uh, they spent a lot of time rethinking about the fundamental aspects of their back end. Um, but they also adapted material components in a really uh, impressive and unexpected set of ways. So for example, they used bottom sheets um, and extended to floating action bar. Uh, to optimize available screen space. So they, they looked at the density of other controls and information density as well. Uh, uh, they were very thoughtful about it and instead used floating action buttons to take, take advantage of, um, um, uh, sorry, they took, floating, they took advantage of floating action buttons to relieve some of the density issues about the content that they were presenting um, on, on, their, uh, on their site and on their app. So using Material, uh, Lyft was able to realize uh, their own singular brand expression uh, on a set of their iconic colors and neon hues, um, but also they were able to get for free 
um, uh, accessibility features and legibility features out of this. So, you know, while they were able to scale from a brand perspective and get new behaviors uh, to better express their brand, they were also at the same time um, uh, able to improve the user experience through uh, reduction of density of information, finding different components that could help support their uh, their users' intentions uh, without uh, without sacrificing density and um, uh, employing custom color algorithms uh, to make sure that their hues and their neon colors uh, were were really well 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 reflected without having to sacrifice access accessibility and legibility because we have those capabilities really baked into our, our platform. Oh, sorry, skip that. Um, so those were those were you know a small company, a big, uh, a medium-sized company, and then a large company. Um, uh, uh, as an example, many large companies use Material. So uh, here's an example of one one such large company, uh, Walmart. So I'm, I'm sure everybody's heard of Walmart. Um, they use the uh, Material Design to power their in-store management uh, app. So this is the app that all store associates use on a small uh, handheld device. Uh, to give floor number, quantity, uh, it's it's effectively a, a point of sale system in their pocket. They can instantly access inventory, uh, check restock information, communicate with other associates, and do a lot more. Um, what works really well in this sort of utilitarian environment, right? You're in a uh, very fast-moving retail environment, and given the kinds of demands that uh, uh, people have today uh, with buy online and pick up in store, uh, they need to be really efficient and move very quickly. Um, and that part of their aesthetic for their internal brand is uh, a sort of um, uh, uh, minimal um, uh, aesthetic. It's very utilitarian. Uh, and it needs to satisfy a lot of users. So Walmart uh, is a very inclusive place in terms of its hiring. Um, they have people of all ages, uh, of all uh, technical understanding capabilities. So there are people who are older who have not been uh, using phones as often as the, the younger generations. There are people with uh, significant amounts of education. There are people who are straight out of high school. Um, so they have the gamut, much like Google, they have the gamut of people that they need to satisfy in terms of their, their employees. Um, so you can watch videos with interviews on Walmart, 1Password, Starbucks uh, on our on our YouTube channel and how they've, they've taken advantage of it. So um, I, what I want you to take away from here is that you know, even if you're a small company, you get a lot of value out of it. If you're a large company, you get a lot of value out of it. Uh, uh, and it being using a design system as well as uh, the specific design system that is material. Um, but But... Most importantly, it can grow with you. So you can start as a small company, and as you grow, you can find different ways to, to um, uh, have, it, have it help you grow as well. Um, so hopefully, um, all of this is getting you a little bit inspired uh, to get started with material. Um, all of our uh, uh, design guidance, all of our guidelines are uh, actually presided uh, on the Material IO uh, website. Uh, we talk about design there. We talk about the design guidelines. We talk about how you use iconography. Um, there are several case studies on uh, both at a app level uh, and a company level. And on the app level, it's further broken down on how do you use specific patterns. If you're trying to accomplish something, there's a lot of guidance on, on pattern utilization. Um, there's also, uh, for, for my developer friends out there, um, there are, uh, 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 sorry, uh, there is uh, code to back up all the designs um, uh, as well. So you can have production ready code. Uh, for Android, for iOS, and then for uh, different frameworks like Flutter. Um, you can find all of that. Um, and lastly, um, on that site, you can find uh, the tools that we offer uh, to uh, make your design a reality. So things like the Material Theme Editor is there. You can actually find the icons. We provide the gallery tool 
which is a, a tool for uh, sharing the design that you want with a large set of people and getting feedback. Uh, it makes collaboration a lot more efficient. Uh, so, so that's the high level uh, of, of employing a design system. What we, what we offer uh, as part of um, uh, material. Um, and uh, you know, as you're here thinking about how you might bring uh, this resource home with you uh, and start to think about it, uh, think about these reasons, these five, five major reasons. And if any of these particularly meet the needs you have right now, uh, think about how you'd use a design system. And, and uh, if, you, if that is a, a design system that is material, uh, please reach out. You can reach out to me. You can reach out to the material team. Um, uh, you can also uh, uh, visit material.io. Uh, that's our uh, public site. Uh, we also recently launched a, a, a blog there uh, and a YouTube channel that talks in detail about different design patterns, uh, different design guidance, how we're evolving components. Uh, we also do design critiques as part of that, uh, of those channels. Uh, so feel free to reach out to those and check those out. You'll you'll get a lot from there. So um, thank you uh, uh, for the time and thanks for listening. Um, I hope this was valuable and uh, I'm excited to see what you guys put together. Thanks, everyone. And please uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, email. Uh, my email address is my uh, same as the Twitter handle that's uh, put there, and it's in the uh, uh, upstart uh, 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 book of book of people. So you can find it there. Don't don't hesitate. <laughs>